Hi guys. Today I have my Sun 1000 inverter on the table in front of me. Who are following my channel, they know that this inverter was built into my power wall and it is actually dead. So in this video, we are going to attempt to repair this device. And I already have to say, this time there's really danger involved in doing this. Because as you will see, as I told you already in the previous video, we don't have a short or anything on this device. The DC side is okay and the problem is on the AC side. And to test the AC side and then the, f the functioning of the inverter requires to plug in this device into mains voltage and then take measurements on a live uh, inverter. So when we are taking measurements, etc., there is always mains voltage, which is in my case here 230 volts present here on these wires on the board. Any mishandling of the probes can cause severe injuries in form of electrocution or shocking yourself. Don't do this if you never have worked on live equipment because you might really be injuring yourself. In my last video I have shown you at the power wall that this device is completely dead. But when is this device actually dead? For this we need to know how the sun inverters work. The sun inverter is powered by the AC side. So whenever there's something on the AC side, it will completely stop working. What is causing it stopping working when there is no AC? Because all the electronics here on this board, right? There's also extra uh, control boards here. They are working on low voltage DC. But this DC is directly converted from the AC side and then the inverter can run. When there is AC is gone, which can also happen when the grid is down, then there is a big relay here on the down, which will open up and this device is just removed from the grid if it's grid tight, right? Okay, I already opened it up. That is pretty simple. There's only eight screws, four on each side, which you open, then you lift off the lid and the device is open. I took measurements inside the board already. And 230 volts is present everywhere in this area. So there's no uh, disconnect. There's no short or anything. But then I also made measurements here in this uh, controlling or measurement areas where the electronics is. And usually you should have normally 5 volts or 3.3 volts available in these areas. And this was the interesting, I could not measure any voltages above some like weird 70 millivolts or something like that. So this is telling me that this inverter does not have low voltage DC which is required for the electronics. And where this uh, inverter is getting its low voltage DC, I will show you in a moment in a few detailed shots and then explain you what I think that the problem here is. So let me show you how this inverter is built. We have here on the down, this is the AC side. So here we have our AC in and out. The AC with these uh, sun inverters is required to run the inverter. Without AC, this inverter is shut down. On the top, we have our DC in, the high voltage DC from the PV or from the battery. And this is handled here in the upper part. But let's look now in detail to our AC. So we are coming in by, with our AC here and this goes initially through fuse and then uh, comes over this uh, 
inductors here probably some filtering measuring and then we have here two wires this is still all in this case 230 volts so I measured all this part and we had 230 volts throughout all this area there were no break of AC power anywhere to find and these two wires are going now to here to this area and this area is now the control board this is controlling the whole inverter and what does a control board need it needs low voltage DC and this DC is generated below that board here you see the AC coming in and then we have a power supply from this inverter it will generate its low voltage DC power which can then operate all the electronic parts and this is where it's getting interesting I already saw it when I took a peek into this area maybe you can see it here there is corrosion everywhere and this is what I think is the problem with this inverter my power wall is not the optimal place probably for this device it's dry but it's still a very humid and hot place and yeah it seems like we got corrosion in this area typically the board is uh, protected but probably not in this area so in order to check the inverter if we can do some repair and how this really looks from the down I have to remove this control board and you can see that all these wires everything is glued to other components I have to first remove that glue there and try to remove the control board and then we will have access to the power supply unit there and yeah if there's not too much of a damage we can clean it up then maybe renew the soldering and this might already fix the inverter let's try to remove this control board I only have a cutter knife and maybe these pliers but yeah let's see how this will work we have to cut away uh, this glue I guess so it's the board is connected to the big capacitors here via this glue I actually don't want to remove connectors if necessary but this one I think have to be removed okay that was easy enough here this looks like a temperature sensor we can try to take this one off also But the board is already coming off actually so okay I think this should be enough if and I can lift this board away from that place here the board is connected to the other connect on the down so okay right let's remove this one so this is the AC 230 volts coming here to the power supply now we are getting a better look on this area and I think it is pretty clear clear to see now look at this area near this uh, this one is a varistor capacitor 
resistor here. This is completely uh, gone, eaten up. There's even a whatever this component is there is looks like it's disconnected almost. Terribly corroded actually. Uh, the corrosion can now of course also be on the lower side of the board. But as I said, this is a lot of corrosion. This area does not have the protective coating, so maybe they should put it here too. Finally, I decided to remove the whole PCB. And if we look now at the lower part of that power supply area, it looks quite clean. But I did it because I have a suspicion. If you look at that resistor which is sandwiched between, the, between those two caps, you can see that it actually have blown out some material. So I would say that this component must be damaged. And I can remove it only by unsoldering it from the down. So. That's what, that's the next I will do, so then I can check what happened to that resistor and yeah, if I have to order something or maybe I can find something in my spare parts. I have removed the resistor, measured it through and it is really uh, broken. The value is showing or else it is infinite resistance, but by the marking it should be 3.1 kilo ohms, so I have to look. Maybe I can find something on another uh, board. And I found another thing, so there seems to be also a trace damage. So here, this trace, which goes from this side of the big capacitor to this smaller one. But this uh, was almost completely burnt through. So I scratched away to the copper and uh, put a little bit solder. So this area seems to be quite narrow and a lot of heat is generated here. Also this diode here uh, was looking uh, as it was not connected good anymore. So I have resoldered it. Yeah, the only thing is now the resistor. I, I don't have anything in this uh, value, not in this uh, size of a resistor. So I have to order this and then we have to hope for the best. Two days have passed, I got my replacement resistor. You see the old one was probably a half watt or one watt resistor. I don't really know, it was 3.1K and because I'm a little bit limited what I can get here in Thailand right away. So this is a two watt resistor, the new one 3.3K. It should at least from the thermal perspective be better and yeah. A little bit different value should not make much of a difference. I'm going to put it back into position here and then we'll reassemble. Okay this is how it looks like now. So this is our new resistor. I protected the other leg with a little bit of shrink wrap, turned it on the other side so that it is a little bit uh, further away from all those capacitors. So, we can't do more than this. I will reassemble the whole board into the case and then the only thing we can do is try it out. So, if I see this now, what happened? I would say that the main reason for the failure should actually have been a thermal event in this area of the power supply. And a melted resistor. All the other spots and stuff are kind of related to that heat which was giving away from that resistor.
plug in the control board. So we see if we have space enough. The resistor is not touching the control board, which is good, otherwise that would not be healthy for the DC if there is mains voltage coming onto it. Let me get the cable again. And then we are going to plug in this inverter and see what is happening. Going to plug in the inverter now and then let's see what is happening. So what happened? And right away we have a display. Wonderful. And it is even showing everything. It is showing voltage, correct voltage, and we have our typical message for now, which is starting voltage too low. And this is exactly an absolutely normal uh, display for this situation. We don't have DC power connected and AC side is fully functional. Perfect. So I would say that the repair was very successful. Uh, I will now go and install uh, the inverter into my power wall and then the job is done. I have unfortunately bad news. You see we have power here. The inverter is reading out required demand etc. And then it's trying to uh, feed in into the grid and so when it changes from standby more or less into load then it shuts down. So obviously we have a power supply unit at the moment which does not deliver enough power. Yeah I want to leave the video here now. I almost thought I've nailed it, but unfortunately, you see, we are on the right path, right? It's a power supply problem and we have enough power when the inverter is on standby, but as soon as it takes some load, it will shut down and it will shut down because the DC power probably will drop below an acceptable value. So now I don't know uh, if this is because I did not get the exactly matching component. The resistor was a little bit higher resistance. It's just 5%, but who knows, I'm not an expert in power supply units. And uh, now I'm at the point where if I want to continue, I need to order components from China directly where I can really get exactly what uh, I need. But the other question is, which I want to take a look into, because there are two capacitors, some components I took off the board there and I measured them, the big ones, they have been okay. There are two smaller ones, maybe they, they have been in the area where uh, there was most corrosion or damage. So maybe there's a problem with those, I can take those off, measure them or look what value they should have. Um, so anyway, I want to maybe get some inputs from you. Maybe uh, you can kind of lead me into the right direction. What shall I do in your opinion? This can be some sort of a rabbit hole. It's very difficult to find the exact point of failure. Most components which are measured uh, have been, as I said, working. Okay, so let's leave it here. Please, uh, if you have some ideas, some inputs, give it in the comments below. And yeah, there will be another part from this story. And yeah, hopefully next time it will then be a happy ending. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe to the channel if you didn't do it yet and I see you next time.